Good afternoon, Facebook Live. Um, I need to share something that the Lord has given me. Um, I wanted to take out time now while I have a break to share what the Lord has given me. I want to start off with prayer. Father God, I just thank you for this prayer, God. Father, I pray that you would bless the hearers of this word, God, that you would bless it. I plead the blood over this word, and I thank you, God, for the hearers and the doers of your word. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I got to say what the Lord has given me. God wanted me to talk about, you see the title, and what he gave me was, for the people, you talk too much. Study to be quiet and to mind your own business. And God gave me 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11, where it reads, I want to read the King James Version first. It says, and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands, just as we commanded you. I want to also read the New Living Translation and it says, make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your hands, just as we instructed you before. You know, the Bible also says in Proverbs that we should be quick to listen and slow to speak. I want to also read this particular verse that the Lord had given me before I get into uh, what God wanted me to say to the people. I want to read the, ampli the amplified version of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 15. It says, make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer or a thief or any sort of crim criminal in response to persecution or as a troublesome meddler interfering in the affairs of others. What the Lord wants me to talk about today is that some people talk too much. Some people talk too much. I had to write this down. I couldn't miss what God had gave me. He said, some people talk too much. They are messy. You gossip. You spread rumors. You sow discord. Some of you spread discord among the brethren. You like drama, drama and dysfunction. Some of you have a lying spirit. God said some of you speak lies. You tell lies and you spread lies. And some of you throw rocks and hide. The Lord also wants me to let you know that some of you are the reason why some relationships are broken up and severed. Why marriages aren't together. Friendships aren't together. And the reason why some family members aren't speaking. People in the church aren't getting along. Be and they are divided because people talk too much, they gossip too much, they spread rumors, and they sow discord. He also said that some of you do it because it stemmed from jealousy, envy. Some of you have hatred. Some of you have insecurities and you have low self-esteem. So this is what the Lord wanted me to talk about. There's a lot of things I'm going to share on today as it relates to studying to be quiet. I want to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 11 again. It says, and that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands just as we commanded you. Sorry about that. It also says in the New Living Translation, make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your own hands, just as we instructed you before. You know, people, we have people that they talk too much. You know, the Bible says that a man is snared by his words. A man is snared by his words. And some of you, you talk too much. You gossip too much. You like to spread mess around. 
You know everybody's business. You know all the tea that's going on. I wrote some things down because I can't forget it. You know, the Bible says in James chapter 3, verse 16, for where envying, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Another version says of James chapter 3, verse 16, for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every evil practice. Some of you all talk too much you like mess you sow discord you are a troublemaker you are a gossiper you are a talebearer and the bible talks about how a talebearer and a gossiper can't be trusted how a gossip and a talebearer they uh destroy friendships some of you all are the gossiper in your family you know everybody's business. You know everything that's going on from the aunties and the uncles, the nieces and nephews. You know everybody's business. You know everything that's going on. You need to learn to mind your own business and to work with your own hands and to study to be quiet. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 that we need to study. That means we need to practice. We need to exercise being quiet. Being quiet at the right time is an is a uh, is a fruit. It is a uh, fruit is one of the fruits of the spirit where you exercise self control. Sorry about that. Where you exercise self control and it's a form of discipline. When you study to be quiet. When you practice to mind your own business and you don't meddle in the business and the affairs of others. Some of you meddle in other people's business. You meddle in other people's marriages. You, merit, you, you meddle in other people's family lives. Some of you meddle in your, your adult children lives. You meddle. You need to learn your, you need to learn to mind your own business. You talk too much. You're messy. You cause drama. You like dysfunction in other people's lives. Some of you don't feel good unless you meddle and cause trouble in other people's lives. Some of you like to be in other people's home and you gossip. Some of you gossip on your job. You gossip. You gossip all day. You talk about other people. You talk about what other people are doing. You, you, you're negative. You're simply negative. And I have to tell the truth, you all. This is what the Lord had given me. You know everybody business. Who's doing what? When they're doing. You know, you know all the tea. You know everybody's tea as they say. Let me tell you, girl, let me tell you the tea. Let me tell you what's going on with this person. Some of you talk too much. You have no integrity. You're not confident. You can't be trusted. Some of you, people will share things with you. They will confide with you and you can't wait. You can't wait to get off the phone and tell somebody what somebody shared with you. I don't care if the person you told, even if the person that you tell won't say nothing, you are meddling in other people's business, you are gossiping, and you can't hold water, as they say. You, you, you don't have integrity. Nobody should tell you not to say something because if they're confiding in something that they're sharing or something that they're struggling with, you should not share that with other people. You should not be quick to gossip and be messy about other people. This is what God wanted me to share. Some of you are the reason why relationships are broken up. Some of you have a lying spirit. You have a lying spirit. You lie in conversation. You lie about people so you can 
uh, destroy relationships. Some of you do it out of jealousy. Some of you do it out of hatred and strife to be evil because you don't like somebody or because you see relationships doing well so you want to destroy it with your lies with your lies you lying on a person because you don't like them you're lying on a person because you're jealous and envious of them this is what i need to share some of you talk too much about your marriage you talk too much. You dog your spouse. You dog your wife. You dog your husband. You talk about them. You dog them. You talk about what they're not doing. How they're no good. What they did. And you forget that the two of you are one. The two of you, the two of you are one. When you married that person, you got into a covenant agreement with that person when you made a vow with that person you are walking in a covenant in that marriage you dishonor your spouse when you talk about them when you bad mouth them this is what the lord wanted me to share you tell all your business you tell people what your wife did and, and and how you're bothered with them. What your husband did. You just dog them out. You talk about them. You bring them down. You're negative. And the Bible says that when a man, uh, that a man should leave his mother and father, he should cleave unto his wife and the two of them will become one flesh. So when you're dogging out your spouse, you're talking about yourself too because the two of you are one. You know, I have a concern and I'm bothered with people that talk about their spouse. That talk about their spouse. You, you're just as bad as, that, as your spouse when you talk about them. God wanted me to talk to the wives. He said that some of you talk too much. He said you talk too much. Some of you are controlling. You operate with a spirit of Jezebel. It's your way or the highway. God said that some of your husband, some of your husbands can't even lead. He said, get out of the way. Study to be quiet. Hold your peace. Go pray and lay out at the feet of Jesus with your concerns. God said for many of you, for many of your homes, he said he is trying to raise that man of God up. He's trying to raise your husband up as the godly priest and headship of your home. He wanted me to point out how some of you are uh, brawling women. You, 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 you constantly causing strife in the home. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 24. I'm going to read the Amplified version. It says, it is better. It is better to live on the flat roof exposed to the weather than in a house shared with a quarrelsome, contentious woman. This is what the uh, this is what Proverbs chapter 24 verse verse chapter 25 verse 24 says about a quarrelsome woman, a wife. The new the new living translation says it's better to live alone in the corner of the attic than with a quarrelsome wife in a lovely home now you guys that is deep god said it is better for a man a husband to be exposed to the weather on the rooftop so he's saying look it's better for a husband to be rained on to get snowed on to to deal with whatever weather that's going on outside than to be in a house to share a house with a quarrelsome and contentious woman you know, God is saying to the wives that 
it's better for a man to live on a rooftop than to be in a house with you. When you're quarrelsome, you always nagging this man. You always causing strife. He said it's better for that man to go and live on the roof. It's better for him to take his bed and go on the rooftop and, and just sleep upstairs on the roof than to be in a house with you. God also want me to talk to unsaved wives. Uh, no, wives with unsaved husbands. Sorry about that. He wants me to share this to wives with unsaved husbands. I want to read 1 Peter chapter 3 starting at verse 1. It says, wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. When they observe their chaste conduct accompanied by fear, do not let do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. So God is saying that it's not about how you're fixing up the outer when it comes to your husband when he's not saved. But he's saying, rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. Let it not just be about, he's saying it's not about that outward beauty, but that beauty from within your spirit man, which is very precious in the sight of God. For in this manner, in former times, the holy woman who trusted in God also adorned themselves being submissive to their own husbands. As Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding. So I read this. God wanted me to read this to say that if your husband is unsaved and you are a saved wife, you will win your husband over with a quiet and gentle spirit. Not you beating him upside the head, telling him if you was like my pastor, if you was like my man of God, you not this and you not saved and you beat him over the head with the word and you telling him what he ain't and how he ain't a man of God. God said that you will win him over with a meek, gentle and quiet spirit. Not you fussing it out at him, but you living that life. And I have to say this, but it's sad, but it's the truth. But a lot of women who are in the house of God, who are in the house, and and this is and this is some of them, and this is some of them, not all, but you have women worshiping in the house of God that are professing to be saved, who husbands do not attend church. Some of them are holy in church, but when they're home, they cause detention. They're quarrelsome. They're, 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 they're brawling wives. And God is saying that you're going to win your husband over with a quiet spirit, how you live your walk, how you, how you're that living epistle read to your husband. You're that epistle that your husband is reading on a day to day basis when you're at home and how you're loving him and how you're treating him, not rendering evil for evil when he's not doing what you want him to do, but when you're uh, walking in that light. When you're uh, living the life of Christ before him, when he's when you shock him by doing the opposite of what he would normally think you would do, when he does something and you behave differently than what he's expecting, when he's seeing that light, when he's seeing that fruit, that the fruit of God bursting out of you. That's what the Lord wanted me to share. How wise with unsaved husbands, how you should have a quiet spirit. Have things. And God is saying, 
Don't say anything. Hold your peace. Let the Lord fight your battle. You fight that battle in prayer. You fight that power. You, 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 you go to God. You go to God and put your husband up before God. The Lord also, he wants me to talk to first ladies as it relates to talking too much and studying to be quiet. And to mind your own business. God wanted me to talk to first ladies. He wanted me to say how some of you first ladies and pastor wives, you talk too much. Some of you talk too much. Some of you cause division and strife in the church. Some of you are tearing up the church. Some of you are not allowing your husbands to lead in the church because you talk too much. Some of you are behind the scenes causing division in the church. You gossip in the church. Some of you first ladies walk in a spirit of jealousy and envy and insecurity. So you talk about some of the women in the congregation. You talk about some of the women in the church. You cause discord and you talk too much. You talk too much. You just simply talk too much. I got to see what the Lord gave me. As it relates to studying to be quiet, minding your own business, and working with your own hands. Some of you wives, you work close with the man of God in ministry, but some of you need to take a step back and let the man of God lead. I have seen it where in, 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 in marriages, when it comes to ministry, where the man may be the apostle, and the woman, uh, sh you know, she she co uh, leads with the man of God, and you would think the man, of, the, you would think the woman is the apostle because she 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 doesn't allow the man to lead. She wants to overpower the man of God. She wants to overpower the ministry and the vision of what the man is saying. Even though the woman has a calling, even though the woman has the mantle of ministry on her life, she still needs to submit to the man of God. Some of you women of God that are in ministry, first ladies are Jezebels. I'm just telling you what the Lord wants me to say. Some of you, some of you women are Jezebels and you, you want your husband to be Ahab's and God is calling him to lead. He is the pastor. He is the bishop. He is the apostle. He is the apostle. He is the shepherd of the house. Even though you lead alongside with the man of God, he is the head. He makes the instructions. He is the visionary and is the leader. Even if he asked you, honey, what do you think? How should we handle this? He makes a decision that you don't like. That is not your job to have a clique of members in the church that you go to and you cause confusion. You gossip about what your husband's decision is. You out of order. I know the devil don't want me to get this message out, you guys. I know the devil don't want me to get this message out. But I got to tell the truth, you all. This is what the Lord gave me. I hope you guys heard the last part that I said. But God wanted me to talk to first ladies and pastor wives. Women that work alongside your husband in ministry. He said some of you are Jezebels. You're controlling. You, you, you want to you wanna overstep the man of God. When he is the head. He is the headship. He is the pastor. He is the apostle. He is the bishop. He is the shepherd leading the house. 
You have to stay in your lane. You have to know your place, even though you're walking alongside, even though you may minister alongside with your husband, with the man of God. He is still the shepherd of the house. And some of you have cliques that you go to uh, first ladies and, and, and uh, pastor wives. You have your cliques. You have a, a group of women that you gossip with, that you share what the pastor is doing. You're talking about what your own husband is doing. You, you're uncovering your husband when you do that. You talk too much. This is how God gave it to me. Some of you talk too much. You sow discord. Some of you are messy. Some of you first ladies and pastor wives are messy. You're tearing up the church. You're causing trouble. Some of you are the reason why people don't want to be at the ministry. I have to tell the truth. This is what the Lord gave me. He also told me that some of you need to study to be quiet. You talk too much. You tell too much of your business. You tell too much of your dreams and visions. And some of you are telling it to the wrong people. You're telling it to people who don't even like you. You're telling it to people that are fake. That, that, that want you to think they like you. You talk too much. Study to be quiet. This message is for everybody. Even myself, I'm telling you, study to be quiet. I'm learning to study to be quiet. To mind my own business. Some of you on the phone too much. You talk too much. Some of you are on the phone too much. You gossip on the phone. You're talking about people. You're telling people business. You're sharing what people confided to you with. Let me tell you, let me share something with you. I have had people, I get people that will, that I don't even know, strangers that will share things with me. They will open up with me. I've had people tell me that I don't even know why I'm telling you this. I haven't even told my own family. I haven't even told people you know that I'm close with what I'm about to tell you. And you know, I have things that have been said to me. I don't go back and call people, guess what? This person told me this and I, I try not to do that. I, I don't do that because you know, especially as believers, a lot of believers don't have integrity. They don't have integrity. You're not confident. You, you can't hold nothing. Even God can't trust some of you. God can't even trust you with some of his secrets, with things that he want to say because you talk too much. God know that you won't even take it to prayer because you talk too much. You talk too much. You need to study to be quiet. You need to mind your own business. You need to stay out of other people's business. You talk too much. You're messy. You gossip all day. You know everything about everybody. So God can't even trust you. God can't even reveal his mysteries. He can't even give you dreams about people, even dreams about people's mess because he know you won't pray. He know you're going to go back and go, oh, girl, let me tell you, God gave me this dream about Pastor Blue. He gave me this. He gave me this dream about Sister Strawberry. She was doing this. She's sleeping with this person. You know, you don't hear me sharing things that God gave me about people. I'm not going to reveal that information. I go and take it to God in prayer because he know I'm going to pray about it. He know he can trust me. He know that I'm not going to reveal this information. This is the, this is the place God wants us to be at. Some of you talk too much. You, you can't hold water. 
You can't ready to let it out. You can't ready to spill the beans about something somebody told you. You're just messy. You're messy. You're messy when you do that. You are a gossiper when you do that. You are a talebearer. I have to share what God gave me, you all. If it hurts, say ouch and work on yourself. Because it's the truth. Some of you don't have integrity. You're not confidential. You spread mess in the church. You spread discord. And the Lord wanted me to talk about that because in the book of Proverbs chapter 6, it talks about how six things God hate. Six things God hate. But seven are an abomination to the Lord. And one of them was a lying tongue. Some of you have a lying spirit. You tell lies, you spread lies, and you speak lies. You are a liar. Some of you all are downright liars. You will lie in someone's face. Some of you will sit in people's face and lie and say you didn't say something when you know you did. You will lie and say you didn't just talk about their sister. Some of you have talked about people right in the church. You talk about people right in the church. While you in church, while you in service, you will talk about people and gossip about people right in the house of God. And the Lord says to be mindful how you enter into the house of God. Some of you don't have the fear of God. You don't have the reverence of God. You don't respect the house of God to the point that you will even gossip in the church. You will look at somebody and say, uh, can you see what she got on? She got on that little skirt. Look at her. Oh, she just, oh my God. I, right in the house of God. You're messy. You gossip. I have witnessed people doing that. I have witnessed people being messy. The Lord has allowed me to, I could, I, you know, I would just be looking, I turn, I look at somebody and I'm like, no, they didn't. No, they did not just do that. No, they did not just say that. Instead of, you know, going to the side and helping somebody, you, you talk about them. You gossip. Some of you talk too much. You talk too much. You talk too much. You know, the Bible says that, that this tongue is a deadly poison. It is a deadly poison. With this tongue, you can bless people. With this tongue, you can curse people with this same tongue. You talk too much. You're messy. You're on the phone. You're, you're telling people's business. You're talking about people. You're bringing people down. You're negative. I'm going to read 1 Thessalonians again. It says, and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands just as we commanded you. I'm going to read this other version. It says, make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your own hands, just as we instructed you before. I think I have some other things that I need to read. I believe I read everything. No, I want to read this. I want to read this as well. I can't remember where I got this out of, but it was in the book of Proverbs and it reads, he that hideth hatred with lying lips and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. I talked about the lying spirit, but I also, I believe I read this earlier. I want to talk about how, uh, I believe it's one more thing I need to say that I wrote down. God wanted me to say that a lot of you all some of you all are busy bodies. You're busy bodies. You are a busy body. 
And I read that verse that talked about a busybody. It talked about how don't get upset. Like, like this verse is saying that, yes, you should suffer. You should go through. If you, it says that, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody meddling in other men's matters. Now I thought it was interesting how this verse talked about how I'm reading from 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 15. This is the verse that I just read. God is saying that you know when you a murderer, when you a thief, when you a criminal, a criminal you know, you, you're going to go through persecution. You're going to suffer for the act that you committed. But to have the word busybody in this verse, along with murderers and thieves saying that God, God is saying in this verse that you're going to suffer when you're a busybody. You're, you're going to go through some things when you're a busybody, when you're a gossiper, when you're always meddling in people's business, when you like drama, when you like to cause confusion. Do you know there are people that love to step back and watch people uh, have strife and get into it? There are people in your family that are actually feeling good and that are happy that family members aren't talking. That, that that family members aren't getting along they love it they love to see the strife they love to see the discord they love to see you and your mother not talking they love to see you and your siblings not getting along they love to see when you know some of you have a niece you have your uncle or your auntie and and some of your family members are jealous and they have hatred in their heart so they are envious of the relationship that you once had because now you're not talking because they sold discord you know that devil know he mad because they sold discord amongst you all so you have people in families that are busybodies you have people in families that are destroying marriages. I've seen it in families where, you know, when people are married and you may have someone in the family because they don't like them married, they want to destroy the covenant. So they start talking about them. They start putting their mouth on them. They start sowing seeds of negativity to their son and their daughter so they can divorce that the, the, the wife or the husband that they're with because they don't like them. Busybodies. They're messy. They're gossipers. They haven't learned how to study, to be quiet, and to mind their own business. So they would rather get in other people's business and cause confusion and cause strife. Everybody that is watching this video, you have, you, you can identify who those people are in your own family, uh, in your own bloodline. You you know who that messy auntie is. You you know who that messy mother-in-law is. You know who that messy mother is. You know who that messy messy sister is or brother, that person that caused trouble. You know who these people are. And they need much prayer. We have to learn according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm sorry, it's 1 Thessalonians. I want to give you the right verse. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. We have to, it says in that you study to be quiet. And to do your own business. And to work with your own hands. Just as we commanded you. You got to learn to be quiet. As I said earlier, the Bible says that a man is snared by his own words. Some of you talk too much. You talk too much. You tell too much. You need to study to be quiet. Some of you need deliverance 
from talking too much. You need deliverance from being messy. You need deliverance from being negative. You need deliverance from that gossiping spirit. You need deliverance from that lying spirit. You need deliverance from, from that spirit of loving strife. Some people love that. They love to see people not getting along. They love to see when relationships are broken up. That is a demonic spirit. You are evil when you love that kind of stuff. You, you're evil. The devil is working through you when you love contention, when you love to see uh, relationships destroyed. You have a problem. You need deliverance. You need Jesus. I'm telling you. I just wanted to share what the Lord had given me out of first that first Thessalonians chapter four, verse 11, that some of you talk too much. You need to mind your own business and to work with your own hands. I pray that this message has blessed you and I pray that it brings deliverance to those individuals that you found yourself in the message. Amen.